In the year 1997, things seemed to be looking extremely well for 18-year-old Travis Meeks, frontman of the band Days of the New. And this band reached high success in the late 1990s. Days of the New is a musical project and creation by guitarist and musician Travis Meeks. And after watching an episode of Intervention in 2010, my musical mind changed forever. Formed in 1995 in Charleston, Indiana. Now where the hell's Charleston? I never heard of Charleston. Where is that? It's where? Southern Indiana, down by the river? Days of the New was a very, very young band. The band had a style, unlike most of what was coming out at the time, seeming to form elements of alternative rock, acoustic rock, and even hints of country, grunge, and acid rock. However, the band was not considered grunge at the time, but their first album titled Yellow most certainly had elements of grunge to it. This album had many hits, and the album would go on to sell 1.5 million copies worldwide, leaving 18-year-olds Travis Meeks, bassist Jesse Vest, drummer Matt Tall, and rhythm guitarist Todd Whitener millionaires at a very young age. Some of their most notable hits are Touch, Peel, and Stand, Shelf in the Room, and The Downtown off their first record, Yellow. Travis Meeks claimed while making the record that he sat in his basement and crafted the first album all by himself in Charleston, Indiana. He then recruited the first lineup of Days of the New, consisting of his friends Jesse Vest, Matt Tall, and Todd Whitener to help him play live. However, this did not last long, and the band was known for mischief such as having backstage brawls that inevitably led to concern from the record company at the time. I'm going to mention one thing, and it's very important. Although there have been many members of Days of the New, and to me they are all equally important, Days of the New will and always be Travis Meeks. This is because he is the musical genius behind all the musicianship, lyrics, and vocals on the songs heard. Now, there were some rumors that the breakup of the first initial band was due to claims that Travis had fired them, and some stating that the band had come to a mutual agreement to split ways. Either way, the first lineup was over, and Travis continued writing music for his second and third albums titled Green and Red, released respectively in 1999 and 2001. These albums did not sell as well as Yellow, but for good reason. Travis was taking different musical direction, evolving and following his pursuit of musicianship in a different way than the record companies wanted. This led to disagreements over what would have been Days of the News' Purple album that actually still has not been released to this day. Following the release of the Red album in 2001, Travis began using opiates as a result of a kidney stone. Inevitably, this spiraled into different addictions and he began using methamphetamine around this time in the early 2000s. A lot of his fortune that was acquired primarily from the first two albums withered away due to addiction. But honestly, I cannot blame Travis, as he faced a lot of pressure extremely young. Imagine being 17 years old offered a multi-million dollar record deal and playing in front of tens of thousands of people. It was clear that Travis had not handled the fame as good as some claim they can and this was another factor in the downfall that was yet to come. Now, come 2005, and Travis was featured on the TV show A&E's Intervention, where he struggled with isolation, addiction, depression, anxiety, and later determined Asperger's Syndrome. It made sense as to why he had such a hard time with fame. There's a lot of problems that come along with autism, but inevitably this is what makes Travis Meeks Days of the News music so pure. It is real and about the struggles and trials and tribulations of life itself. And for sure, Travis has lived to tell the tale. After going to rehab in 2005, he would continue pursuing music, but never had the record deal for Purple once hoped, leaving him on a constant battle of playing bar gigs and small tours. Not only that, but he continued having on and off bouts with addiction, and unfortunately, this would remain a constant throughout his life. Still, Days of the New to me is highly underrated and often harshly judged. I believe this is primarily due to the taboo nature of the topics Travis himself speaks. They are just simply too complex for most people to understand. I mean, he was speaking about abuse, isolation, and spirituality in his mid-teen years and before that. But not only that, he has a gift that not just anyone will possess, that he was born with. So, where is Travis now? Unfortunately, Travis Meeks as of May 15th, 2020, is in jail 
in custody after repeated offenses of possession for methamphetamine. He is now 41 years old and seems to have kind of lost a lot of the singing power that he once had. There are many fans of Days of the New and they are extremely loyal people. We're still holding out hope for Travis Meeks and Days of the New. Travis Meeks and Days of the New both have unreleased songs, mostly of Travis playing acoustic guitar and singing himself but others with guests such as the Doors to B-sides of the albums he created. These are good tracks with catchy but dark melody lines that speak often about the truth of the dark sides of life. And, despite what we've heard negatively about Travis Meeks on the internet, it doesn't matter. He's still, truly, a gift to the world of music. Here's the gift I give to you, here's the gift you give to me, to the end of time. To the end of time To the end of